so what's your name? Nicole Berman. No, like, what do you want people to actually call you? Well, Nikki then. <laughs> Nikki Berman. Okay, <laughs> where are you from? Phoenix, originally Missouri, live in Phoenix now. I am a strength coach and I do nutrition coaching um, between online and in person. I do have some male, but I tend to get that beginning female who's scared to approach that corner with the racks, get them going, get, them comp get their confidence up and just teach them the basics and go from there. So I started working in the fitness field around 2008 and that started with the typical personal training stuff. You know, you get your certificate, you start doing that bogus stuff. CrossFit came in. Um, I was probably first presented starting strength in maybe 2012 at work. Thankfully, you know, Cody Miller was a, was a co-worker, for example. So, like, there is a couple good trainers in our old company in St. Louis that, pre that presented starting strength to me. And once I started reading the books, I was hooked. I knew this is something that I needed to do. Um, so then I started practicing it and myself um, and with clients. But then I really don't feel, and I, you know, I went through the linear progression and I did my own coaching. But I look back at videos that I posted and I just laughed because my form was just nowhere near where I thought it would be until I hired a starting strength coach. Like that's, the, that's just the best thing you could do for your own coaching. And then from there, he brought me through another, another form of linear progression. We built it a little bit more, fixed all my form, um, and then he's brought me through just different types of intermediate. Like we've done the four-day split, we've done Texas Method. I've gone through different types of programming so I could experience it before I have my clients do it. And your own personal experience, being able to fix your form and understanding your own programming is important too. How many times have you gone to the Spanish Strength Center? This is technically my third. I would say second for real, real attempt. My first one was back in 2013, and I thought I was ready for that one. That one didn't have the extra opt-in fee, so I, you know, I went for it. I definitely learned really quickly that I was not ready for the coaching, but I knew the information. So I obviously did not pass, but I learned a ton. And then after moving to Phoenix, it took me a little bit to get kind of reestablished, get new clients. But then eventually, um, actually, when I hired my coach with SSOC, Cody Miller, he was probably the biggest help in getting me back to being motivated to dive into the information again and really go for it. And then my husband's too, his house has been really supportive. So that brought me to March of this year. And that was my, like, I was going for the, for the coach. I opted in. Um, I thought I had it, but I didn't. I failed. And I'm glad, I, I'm glad I failed because that made me really just work harder. I, my, just in two months, my confidence grew just, just in that little shorter time frame. I did a lot of reaching out to other coaches. I worked with anyone that I could. I got good feedback and took the feedback I got from March and just really worked hard at the things that I needed to work on. I thought I did really well, but then once I read the feedback, it kind of, I realized that I was a little too relaxed, that I definitely needed to do the things they said, like be louder on the platform, own the platform more, um, show more confidence. So those are the things that I really focused on since March that brought me to this seminar. It was definitely a learning experience. I. Like I said, I'm glad I, I'm glad I failed because I know I was close. I know I was borderline, but I'm glad that they didn't just let me slide through the cracks because I'm an intern and you know whatnot. Because um, it really, I know this process is to make you become a better coach, and it definitely did. I have a wide range of clients, different ages, and I would take anyone, like anyone that was willing to learn. I was even giving free sessions for a while there because I just needed to get in front of more people take them through, you know, just the, the very beginning stuff. Because what I think the, a problem is, is you see the same clients over and over again. You get used to them. They get comfortable. They get, they have good form. So the cueing is, is minimal. You're not taking them through that beginning process of learning the lift for the first time. So I actually started offering free sessions for a while just to practice the beginning stuff. Um, I've done a lot of traveling to reach out to other coaches. That was huge. If I mean, I have Robert Santana in the area, and he's been really helpful, too, but he's also really busy. So I'm like, okay, 
I'm like, who else can I reach out to for help? So Cody, being living in St. Louis and me being from there, I have family there. So I took a two-week trip there just to work with him and shadow him. And then I went to L.A., worked with Paul Horn. So anyone that I could reach out to, I have. And just getting to know everyone, it's been fun, too. Everyone's got a different personality and a different approach. I've learned something new from everyone. StrengthCon was also really helpful. I hung out at the gym more than just my lifting time block. So I could shadow more and coach more. And some of the coaches let me coach, too, which was awesome. And I got more feedback. Whenever I had a chance to get feedback, I did. And Robert's been awesome, too, letting me work in with his clients and coach there, too. I would say I started really diving into the material back in 2012. And then I would say maybe a small break in there from moving to Phoenix. But then I dived back in probably 2000. 14, I started taking it really seriously again. And then obviously hiring Cody has been the most, like keeping me the most consistent with my own lifting and really diving into the material. Mm, you know, I would say last couple years, it's been like any chance I had, I was studying mm -hmm. and trying to review my anatomy because I, I have a biology background, a biology degree, but I... I graduated back in 2008, so I needed to definitely refresh that material. I have a huge stack of note cards I've made, just anatomy stuff and physics stuff, um, anything that I needed to study out of the book. I just really tore those books apart on top of the coaching. It's by far the hardest credential out there, which is why you get business from it, because people know what it takes to become a coach. So I think just that in itself, knowing that they're not letting anyone sit by the slip by. If they're borderline, they're gonna fail. You have to be a clear pass. And you know, you might learn that the hard way and it might hurt at first when you find out you fail. But my biggest advice would be to not give up. If you're close, go back soon. Don't wait too long. Take a couple months to work on whatever it is that you need to work on and come back. It's worth it, it's worth the investment. You'll get it back in business real quick. How is it worth it for you as a person who's already working in a, as a trainer and you're already, you're already doing essentially what you want to do? Like what, what value does this, the starting strength coach add to you? Is well, a few things. I mean, I'm an intern with, with SSOC, so I definitely want to work with them. Um, and just me becoming a better coach, my clients are getting better service from it. And the fact that I already have Robert, for example, in the area, he's, he's full, he's busy. He has sent me tons of people that he just gets contacted left and right for. He doesn't have room for them. I, I have a couple driving from Tucson next week to meet with me, and I don't even have my credential quite yet. So it's pretty awesome knowing, that, knowing what you get out of it, too, from a business standpoint. The hardest part of this process has probably been getting over my fear of being somewhat on stage. You kind of have to perform the weekend at the seminar. And, you know, I, I know I can coach and I know I'm a good coach, but then showing it when you're being evaluated has definitely been the hardest because I have test anxiety and I always have. So getting over that, which I definitely, the confidence obviously helped this time around. Getting your confidence up is going to be huge. I came in 2013 thinking I was a great coach too. Yeah. It's I don't know. It's like I don't feel like, and I didn't have a coach that I was working with at that time. And I don't feel like until you actually work with a coach do you realize how much you're, you're not ready for it. Yeah. Or go to a seminar and don't opt in yet. Just go to a seminar and coach as if you are opting in so you get that feedback. If someone wanted to become a starting strength coach, I would say to read the books a ton, take really good notes, um, make note cards or whatever it is that works best for you to study. And then if you have no coach in the area, I would recommend traveling to work with one, even for a weekend. You're going to get a better perspective, um, get some real-time coaching. And if you can't, I would recommend hiring an online coach with Starting Strength because that has probably been, that definitely has been the best thing for me. Like the feedback you get, the detailed feedback, and then watching your videos, reading the feedback, it'll make you a better lifter. 
and it will definitely help you develop your own coaching eye for sure. Um, and then just coaching as many people as you possibly can. Offer free sessions, whatever you have to do to get in front of as many people as you can.